on today's episode of Project 380, we're going to be swapping out this for this. So to remove the intake plenum, we really want all this wiring out of the way. So we're going to run plug it one by one, label everything up so we know what everything does once there's no components in there. So starting from the exhaust side of the engine, we have got intake air temperature sensor. Next is the mass airflow. Right down here on the power steering pump. The sensor for that. This I think at one point was to do with aircon. Um, it was removed years ago and honestly cannot remember whether that went to my aircon or not. So we're going to label it up maybe aircon. Next one along is the crank angle sensor. Over on the intake side, we've got cam angle sensor. Idle control valve. Throttle position sensor. And the last three down here, I can't remember what all these do. Hopefully, once we've got the intake off, we'll remember what they do. But we'll just unplug them for now. All three are slightly different, so they can only go in the right hole. Next we'll get the control cable out of the way, a couple of 12s, just crack that off just a little bit, that should pop out with a little persuasion, open the throttle body, pop that out, retaining the screw back here, There's a plug on the back of the intake. I think it's for the swell flaps that run here in some models. So we'll just disconnect that. Mark that up. And chuck it out of the way. So now we're gonna disconnect the throttle body from the intake plenum. Uh, this pipe here and this pipe here they do have coolant in them next undo the four bolts here here and one hidden right down here
Now the bottom two are two different lengths. The long one comes out of this side, short one is hidden down here. So if you are using this throttle body again, make sure you know where all those come from. They are 12 mil, whereas the top are 14 mil nut. Is a bracket down here that connects the two half of the intake manifold together so you don't need to take all of them out so I'm just gonna take off two bolts get access to all of the bolts that separate the plenum. Again, these are different lengths. Three nearest the engine are longer, and three at the back are shorter. Now, this should be able to come apart. And we've forgot one little pipe here. So this one goes from top to bottom. This needs to be taken off as well. off it comes. So these are the swell flaps you'll find in the Mark II intakes but not in the square top JDM one or the 1.6 Mark I. So they just at a certain rev range open up and give you more airflow. So down the bottom here on the end of the wiring harness that runs through the fuel rail, there is a ground that goes straight to the alternator. So we'll take that off. Now for the fuel rail, that is just three bolts. Now underneath all of these there is plastic little washers. You may lose them, so be careful. Just a little pry away. And there are the plastic washers. Don't lose them. At this end of the rail on this model, we have the, I think the out and the in fuel. So just disconnect them. tougher than it should be but now the fuel rail should just lift out of the way to remove the bottom of the intake it is five across the top easiest with a swan neck It's 
one on the end directly underneath this port easiest with a uh, c-spanner now the other three are directly underneath the intake ports we can have a look at what we're going to be replacing it with. The Skunk 2 Racing Inlet Manifold. I purchased this off of Boffy Racing. It cost me just shy of £400. This thing is incredibly light compared to the older unit. It's got a 68mm inlet diameter and you can use your standard throttle body. It's got a flange design where it can fit the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 and it's really thick here so you can pull the runners. It's also got five mountain holes for all your accessories, vacuum lines, stuff like that. Now this manifold does actually split, so let's split it apart and take a look. So I've removed the top of the plenum. Now you can see the velocity stacks inside. They've positioned them so that all the runners are equal length. What I also like about the top of the plenum is they've left the plaque off, the Skunk 2 plaque off so that you can paint this, get it powder coated and then put it on afterwards so you don't have to waste it. While I was on the Boffy website I also purchased the Skunk 2 throttle body. Now the reason I have purchased this is because I've heard horror stories of this bar here on the standard throttle bodies snapping going inside your intake and you're stuck at wide open throttle. This thing's great, you can use it on your standard intake manifold. Um, you can also use standard idle door control valve and your throttle position sensor. At the time I purchased this for £270. So I was putting this all back together, ready to go on the car. It's holding it like this and I noticed something tickling my hand. So, the bolts that hold on the throttle bracket do actually go all the way through. So when you're putting these on, put some thread sealant or PTFE tape or something on them, just so boost can't escape out of the bolt holes. Putting the new manifold on is fairly straightforward with only one key difference. These two pipes here that used to go to the underneath of the intake manifold won't be used anymore so simply just loop them. Now we're not putting new gaskets on because this will be coming off again very soon. So make sure you pick the right hole. I'm just putting two nuts on for now. Now just put your throttle cable back in. This bracket that comes with the manifold does actually go two ways. So it needs to be in this position for the Mark II and using the other bolt hole for the Mark I. I hope you enjoyed that episode guys. Don't forget to tune in next time where hopefully I'll be revealing what turbo I will be running on this car. If you learned anything or liked the video, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe.